So we're here at Twisted. They are the ultimate when it comes to tuning defenders. I've worked with them before, but I've had something which I've been wanting to do personally for five years now, and this project is about to happen and I can't wait. Come have a look at what these guys are the best at, modifying, tuning and twisting. This has actually got the Corvette engine in it. Give it a little rev. <laughs> Lovely. So we're here in Thirsk in Yorkshire. Um, it's a snowy day. I've driven all the way up from um, a nice warmer Surrey, um, at least less snowy and we are en route to Twisted Automotive. There's lots of people that can tune and make a Defender better, um, but they're the only ones that purely do Defender. Ever since I was a kid, um, I was brought up um, spending a lot of time in Defenders. Um, I spent a lot of time in Cornwall, where my uh, family had Defenders. We had a custom one with the roof cut off we used to take down to the beach, which I, as a kid, thought was the coolest thing, and I still to this day think it's the, the coolest Defender I've seen. Um, and even back at home where we lived in the countryside there was always Defenders um, around and it was probably the first car I actually ever drove was a Land Rover Defender. Not easy, long clutch, big stick but you know you never forget those memories as a kid and um, I always thought one day I want a Defender and, and when I found out that the Defender was stopping its production about a year before they actually did make the last car I thought right this is my time so that's when I went and placed the order for one um, and within a week of it arriving it was up here at Twisted uh, having, having work done. I'm really excited for this project. Um, for me to build the ultimate Defender it's got to have that LS3 Corvette engine in it so I'm super excited to, to get that put in in the next couple of months and, and show you guys the story of of the process and how much work goes into just changing an engine. The thing which I love about Twisted is you can take it to them and you can mod anything. And I've been there three times now um, and I've always said the one goal is to put an LS3 Corvette engine in. Uh, Twisted now is in its 20th year. Um, we produce some phenomenal vehicles for some great people. The common theme is everybody's an enthusiast it's not just about having something different it's because they love whatever that vehicle means to them yeah. uh, and, and we're able to you know with the guys in here and the products that we've developed over the years we're able to create a vehicle which uh, fits modern lifestyle and also has that character of the defender yeah. if you don't know a huge amount about defenders you've got the 90 which is the short wheelbase and then you've got the 110 which is the 110 inch wheelbase which is the longer one but there's so many varying formats you can have glass on the rear or you can have like a van spec you can have the pickup like the one back there which is on a 130 chassis so it's a lot longer than the 90 um, there's so many different variants that you can do with a defender this has got the stage uh, stage one grill on it uh, leds uh, different JW speaker headlights and there's a few down here which are just very standard defenders which some people prefer um, I'm sure this appeals to some people it's not my cup of tea but if you want to if you want to stand out like you're in Miami or San Tropez this is probably the one to go for this is a completely stock defender some people love it that's the typical military and your farmer spec um, but come on we're here to see a twisted So this one started out on, you know, sim very similar to yours in stance, standard height with our progressive suspension, um, our 18 inch rim with a, I think it had a Cooper tyre originally. The Defender has kind of been a staple part of my growing up, my yeah. father having Land Rover series or a Range Rover or something, um, and always working with them. I got my first Land Rover, I thought it was probably 11, I used to drive it around the fields and you just couldn't get me out of it. Um, I'm so lucky to have been able to progress from a hobby into having a business that you know we can all get really passionate about. Yeah. 60 mil wider in track as well, wider wheel but big arches, you then need to fill the arch. Yeah. So we've gone out another 60 mil. Um, 
raise the suspension a couple of inches, probably an inch and a half of usable extra yeah. uh, with the weight of the winch and so on, light bar. But, you know, it's a 450 horsepower Tonka toy. It just Is what, that what, what it's pushing out, 450? Well, about that, yeah. It could be suspension, it can be soundproofing, might be a different exhaust or a bit more power. We, we clearly talk about the big builds because they're the ones that we get really excited about, but our core customer base come in and have you know, it's stepping stones, it's adding to the vehicle to make it suit them. Um, not everybody knows from day one what they want. You know, we've been talking about V8 for yeah. probably two or three years, and it's taken till now to actually get, get to doing it. Yeah. Done that a few times. So that's it. That is it. That is it. Oh, look at that. Well, I get these nice little plaques on my one, Charlie. A little treats in it. Maybe. <laughs> probably 62 or three now V8 builds. Uh, and it's a constant evolution. There's a lot behind the scenes that a lot someone of would goes 100%. On. Yeah. Like the, in my def my defender now shuts like a golf, yeah. and most defenders have like a slam slash rattle. You know, you've you've fettled that door and moved its position so it sounds and shuts how it should. So I'm going to take a chance and see if this door opens. Forgive me. This is a <laughs> an alarm going off. Um, I'll turn it off. That shuts like a golf. First time it came here, um, I had them replace all the bolts, external bolts with stainless steel bolts. Um, the defenders are known for rusting, um, so the first thing that rusts are the bolts. They've now been changed to stainless steel so they don't rust. Um, one of the other common issues with the defender is um, you get a lot of um, internal noise from the rear wheel rattle. Um, you can see this bracket here. Uh, holds the wheel instead of it being held on the door. Um, so you don't get the wobble. When you hit a speed bump, it's a lot more um, supported and you don't get the horrible rattling. If I'm honest, people that have these, um, it goes back to my favorite saying, you're always trying to polish a turd. At the end of the day, it's a farm vehicle. Um, it's not overly comfortable. We try and make best by putting in these nice racing seats and doing all the leather. Um, but at the end of the day, you could go out and spend less money on getting something which has beautiful leather, heated seats, um, doesn't rattle like that. You know, I've spent a load of money soundproofing this, tried to insulate it so it's not cold every morning, your hands are freezing cold, but it's still, it's still crap, but you're, you're willing to put up with that because you love, you love the, the product. And that's why um, I spend time and money on it is because I love the car and so I just try and make it as good as I can. Because of my job, I love going fast, I love um, fine tuning machinery um, and I don't like anything um, you know, standard. I don't like sort of getting on the train and seeing someone with the same watch or someone having the same car and I think the Defender, you can customise them and you very rarely see exactly the same Defender. Um, and so I've customised this beyond belief already but I've never touched the drivetrain and that shocks quite a lot of people considering my job as a racing driver. They're like, oh, how much power have you got it? Or have you chipped it? Or, uh, you know, what, what have you done to it? Have you put air filters on it? And I'm like, no, I've done everything so far without touching the drivetrain. Always knowing that I would one day put this LS3 Corvette engine in it. We're now at that stage. This has been my fifth year with this car from you. And we're, uh, we're here to put the, the Corvette engine in, which I'm super, super excited about. And this is the LS3 Corvette engine. This is 430 horsepower. You never exactly know with these things. Each one's slightly different. Uh, 440 newton meters of torque. Um, the torque's not crazily high, but it's all low down, which is good for the automatic box I've got going with it. Um, I was very kindly given this engine um, from General Motors uh, Chevrolet, who I race for in America. They sent me this crate engine. It doesn't come complete with all the bits that you need, all the ancillaries, the fuel pumps, the electric, all the wiring. It's purely just the crate engine. So um, there's a lot more to be strapped to this. Um, probably again, 80 to 100 hours to just plumb this engine into my car over there. Um, but I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this for like five years. Um, but the time's come, I got given the engine. Um, and this is like my own investment. I've, I believe in this car. I've put a lot of time and money and effort into it. And I want it to be the ultimate defender. So for it to be the ultimate defender, I've got to put a Corvette engine in it. So this is it. The hood's coming up. Yep. I'm hoping. 
Oh, maybe not. So this is all those little bits that you don't think about and that's why it takes a good couple of months to do this job. They've just lifted up the hood um, and because I had this aftermarket roll hoop put on, uh, first of all, it makes the car a lot safer because I, I know what these cars are like when they roll over without a roll hoop. Um, and also I think it looks aesthetically a lot better. But we can't lift this up enough to take the bolts off, to take the hood off so we can then lift the engine out. So we've got to take the bottom bar of the roll cage off so we can then unbolt the hood, get that off, and then eventually crane the engine up, so. Well, generally when we're building a car, we're doing other bits as well, so it's not just the engine work. Yes. Um, quite often it's lights, uh, roller protection, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And this one, because we're going from a manual to an auto, you've got to do that whole fabricator centre console, yeah. Yeah. you know, change a lot of the internals yeah. just for that. Just so. for that, so yeah, yeah it's... Um, Time consuming. It's, you know, people see it as just an engine swap, but it, it does more. Yeah, 100%. You know, far more in, so the next time I'm going to be back here at Twisted is in a couple of months time. The diesel engine is going to be replaced with the 420 horsepower Corvette engine which is already putting a smile on my face. Hopefully it's going to sound a lot better and perform a lot better. I'll be back here in a couple of months time and uh, we'll, in the meantime we'll let the, the amazing guys here at Twisted who are the best crack on with it and uh, hopefully create my dream defender. Three, two, one. Come on. Yeah, still going, still going, still going, still going, still going. Stop. Yeah, just under 17 seconds, 0 to 60. We'll see what that becomes when we uh, stick the Corvette in it. 